I'm gonna play around here with the spectrum analyzer looking at the two RTL SDR filter this one is the AM broadcast band reject filter and this one is the broadcast FM reject filter that I have also got two DC blocks that I'm gonna put in line and see what that does to our frequency here so the first thing we're gonna do is we calibrate it and just right now a disclaimer I'm no RF specialist so I'm just a hobbyist so bear with me so we want to turn on the tracking generator and have normalize on So at this point we can go ahead and put in our device on a test. So let's go ahead and start with the AM filter. So with the AM filter in place, we are right now sweeping all the, the whole frequency from 0 megahertz, uh, 0 hertz. To one gigahertz and you see right away there's an interesting little dip up there somewhere um, let's go around turn on the marker and scroll over there then I can tell you where that is somewhere high up at 600 megahertz or so but most likely that's not what you're interested in you're probably more interested down in the lower HF range so let's change the frequency here go down to yeah since that is blocking everything under 2.6 megahertz let's just go to 10 megahertz and look at that so now if we go back to the marker we see there's a slight dip, but not too bad, right around uh, 12 megahertz. And the device on the test says 2.6 megahertz high pass filter. So at 2.6, let's go where that is. That is right around here. So right here we can see that the signal is passed through below that we have a steep drop down by at least 40 decibel all the way down to 50 decibel and then if we continue on up around 400 kilohertz that lets again some of the signal through so if you want to look at that closer can zoom in so we say 400 back to frequency stop frequency type in 400 kilohertz and right here we can see oops I'm turning the wrong knob here I need to go back to the marker Okay, now we can jump around. So now that we are zoomed in, we can more accurately see that it's not actually 400 kilohertz, but it stops. It's definitely good all the way to 8 kilohertz. So if you want to zoom in at 2.6 megahertz, we can go ahead and do that. Let's type in the start frequency at 1 megahertz and the stop frequency at 3 megahertz and right here we should see the curve. So if you go up with the marker, so right at 2 megahertz is when we start going up. 
and once we are definitely by 2.4 we are in a pretty decent range already where the signal is being passed through. From my experience using the R RTL SDR around here I have a AM radio station fairly close in the neighborhood and the signal is pretty strong and I can't use the dongle any really for HF stuff it just blasts it out and that makes the night and day difference for me so let's go ahead and put in the FM filter and look at that so with the FM filter in place and the obligatory 0 to 1 gigahertz spectrum we see right down here is where we block the FM frequency 88 to 108 megahertz and it's really nice across even the higher frequencies so we wanna zoom in though at the frequency where we block so let's go ahead and set the starting frequency somewhere about uh, 50 megahertz and the stop frequency at about 130 megahertz go back to the marker and now we can zoom around let's look at 108 that's supposed to be the top hardware blocks so that it's really rated down in the bottom section unlike the pass filter, high pass filter, it was up there where they spec'd it out and then the 88 megahertz is also down here right there but again it's a really nice curve and does really what it's promised again a 50 decibel drop on the blocked FM band Personally, I didn't have really had any need yet for using the FM band stop filter for the things that I did, but I haven't done too much. And I don't have a strong FM station that seems to cause issues. Yeah. So let's go ahead and put in the DC block and see what that does. So here we have the DC block in line. I did check out with the multimeter. It actually does block DC. The multimeter didn't have a connection through on both of those ones. So again our obligatory 0 to 1 gig. And we have a perfectly straight line. And we really want to zoom in on the frequency a little bit more. Probably down on the bottom range where it blocks the DC so let's just say for fun 10 Hertz no that was 100 Hertz and yeah it's it looks fine here let's go ahead and do No, we can't go further down. So we start at zero and uh, end at a hundred. And funky thing right now happening. I'm curious where that's gonna take us. let's zoom out a little bit more that was really interesting so let's go to 
one megahertz. And ah, there we go. Right here we see a pretty big dip down and then it goes up again. So let's take the marker and scroll over to where it takes the dip down. And it's right around 10 hertz that it dips down. And we're gonna be up again above 10 decibel, around 300 kilohertz. Probably around here is where we would say it's good. That's 640 kilohertz. So if we zoom out a little bit more, let's say 10 megahertz. Yep, right here we see that dip. So the DC block definitely will have an impact on the lower frequencies. Let's go ahead and try out this bigger DC block here and see how that behaves. Now we have the big N-type connector DC block in line and I had to do a little bit different. I just used a normal couple of that so my cable is long enough and put it directly onto the spectrum analyzer. I did make sure to calibrate it again, but it didn't really need that. So we are again at the full range of 0 to 1 gigabyte, and that looks fine. So let's go zoom in as well and see if that one has the dip down at the lower range. So let's change the stop frequency to 1 megahertz. And yep, that has exactly the same behavior, where we have the drop. So it, right around 640, that's the same frequency even. And the lower power that was around, yeah, around 10 kilohertz is where it drops down. I find that quite interesting. I don't think if we zoom in more on the lower range on the 100 hertz that we see much interesting stuff except that right around there will drop down again as before. Yep, right here we're going down. Just for fun, let me put those filters in the other way. So they're gonna be upside down. And just to show that they behave the same no matter which direction you put them in. So let me do that now. So I went ahead and Connect it the opposite way and put the range to the interesting part of 0 to 200 megahertz. And we see the band is being stopped again at the same rate uh, range. We go over with the marker, it should be from 88 to 108. So, right down here, we have the 88 and 100 of 8. 100H should be right over here. So that one is definitely fine which way you put it in. And here we have the AM filter the opposite way on now. And if you look at our spectrum analyzer again the upper point is right at 2.6 and it's blocking the frequency below just like before 
So neither of those filters is in any way directional. So that was all for today, playing around with the spectrum analyzer and a couple of filters that I had.